I don't, I don't either. So let me ask um, Anna or something. All right, Bill. Can you, Bill? Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? Thanks, Kara. Uh, yeah, I can hear you great. Uh, thank you. I'm uh, I'm working from the home today. Uh, my uh, my wife's a teacher, and she started back uh, started back today. And so my wow. three kids that are fifth and fourth and third grade, they actually start next week. So I'm working from the house today. Um, typically stressed. doing these from my <laughs> office, so f forgive me, but uh, no it's going to be awesome. So you, you can hear me all right, though. Yep, perfect. All right, so I'm going to stream us live here, and, and we'll get we'll get going. But before I stream us live, conversational in tone, uh, have you tell a little bit about? I'll, I'll kind of set it up. Uh, you know, obviously, you guys have done. Uh, you personally, right, based on your role and your connections, you guys, have, you're over 250 uh, episodes of the Real Estate uh, uh, Sessions, sessions yep. podcast. And so that's kind of how I'll lead you. Hey, from time to time, I bring in top luxury agents or influencers. Uh, today, I'm excited to bring someone in that is interviewing top brokerages and real estate from all price points, not luxury specific, but it's good to get different perspectives. So uh, that's why I invited Bill on today. That's going to be kind of my, my, my cool. intro. And I've got all, um, you know, I've got like some of the ones I've interviewed, right? Dolly Lenz, uh, mm -hmm. Louise Phillips, Forbes, um, then people like Richard Silver, uh, oh, yeah. Monica Monson, Michael Meyer, the Stockworth group here in, in Orlando, in Florida. Perfect. So there's a few of them we can, what we can talk about. All right, that, that's that's awesome. Thanks for letting me know that. Yeah, I've, I've had a lot of them on our show, and I saw on your tip yeah, turn know. 50th, you had uh, Stefan Swinepool. We had him on ours. Yeah. Um, so this is awesome. And, and this is our that's fourth. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, he's mm -hmm. interesting, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he's excited. So this is, like, is this for you? He's, he's very exciting, though. He's got so much enthusiasm, and he's, he's, you can tell he's, his wheels are turning. He's He's, yeah. he's left brain analytical, but uh, so we've done, I think, 103 or four podcasts, but we'll probably repurpose yours to a podcast. This is what I'm referring to as our luxury lunch and learn. I'm going to sneeze. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, this you. is our, this, thank you. This is our 40th luxury lunch and learn. And um, nice. we launched this because of COVID-19 on April 10th. We had Megan Berry from uh, Who's Who in Luxury Real Estate, our first guest. And um, so, yeah. All right, cool. Let me, uh, it'll be at one second. And I, I'm going to have my assistant, Kara, um, stream it live to your personal page. I'm going to stream it live Good. to the industry syndicate because uh, uh, you're a member of that as yeah. well as I am uh, and uh, a couple other groups. I better mute that. All right, we should be streaming live any minute uh, here. All right, welcome to the Welcome to the 40th episode of the Luxury Lunch and Learn. I'm really excited. We launched this, as many of you know, due to COVID-19 on April 10th. We've had various guests on. We had Megan Berry, who was our first guest. She is with Who's Who in Luxury Real Estate. And we have various guests on, whether they be luxury agents, they be influencers. Uh, they have their finger on multiple pulses uh, in the broker community, the agent community. And today's guest is no different. Uh, Bill on. Uh, Bill, welcome. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Michael, I appreciate it. It's been uh, been a big fan of watching what you're doing, and so it's it's an honor to kind of come on here and have a conversation. Yeah, and, and Bill, you um, have a finger on multiple markets and multiple agents and brokers, not necessarily luxury specific, but uh, t tell everybody a little bit about you and your role, and you're based in Florida, but also about your podcast, which has over 250 episodes. 
Right. So uh, I'm with Fidelity National Title. I'm based in the uh, St. Petersburg area, but uh, kind of cover the entire state. We have two, uh, two large operations here in Florida. And my role as Vice President Digital Strategy, my job is to help realtors be smarter with technology and, and social and all those things that sometimes they don't have the uh, time or energy to, to kind of grasp completely. Uh, so we created this role about a decade ago over in Phoenix. Uh, I've been out in Florida now for three years. And so it's been a, it's a, it's, it's a fun ride to be able to um, try to stay on top of what's happening. And Michael, you know, there's so much being thrown at, you know, agents like you all day long. Uh, it's nice to have a filter. And so I think that's kind of what I do for, for the industry. And, and I started the podcast um, August of 2015 because podcasting was a thing and I, I wanted to know about it. And generally I don't just try to talk about something without exploring it and playing with it. Right. So I have a YouTube channel with hundreds of videos because how do you talk about YouTube without doing it? Um, how do you, you know, play on social sites? You know, I've been on Twitter since 08. I think you have to kind of play and understand it. So I decided to create a podcast. I thought I'd go five or 10 episodes. And my first guest was Jay Thompson, who recently oh. retired from Zillow. Yeah. Jay's sure. a good guy. And, uh, Jeff Turner was in there like number seven, you know, okay. and people that I knew and, it just uh, didn't stop. I was publishing on Tuesdays and I still publish every Tuesday morning at 4.30 Eastern. And uh, it's just become a passion project for me. It really allows me to get connected to people in the industry uh, on a different level. And, and so, you know, the ability for me to have this network of people that I can reach out to with questions that help me in my role has been pretty powerful. So, um, it's, it's, it's something that I'm, I'm proud of and something that I'll uh, continue. I, I don't see it ending. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see a sunset date for the real estate sessions. So Yeah, so the, you said the real estate sessions is the name of the podcast. You can mm -hmm. find it what, on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Yep, everywhere you find podcasts. Yeah, or the real estate sessions.com, right? Or the real estate sessions.com. Very good. Our, our podcast, a title is called Luxury Listing Specialist, and you can find that on just the same iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or you can go to luxury, what, what, what's the name of our luxury listing podcast.com, luxury listing podcast.com. And uh, we're, we're producing. Uh, like you, one a week. Uh, we we launched that earlier this year. We were doing two a month, and then in 2020, we launched four a month. And uh, we just had our 103rd, I think, episode out there. So we're congratulations. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. We're not above 250 yet, but uh, <laughs> it's just a uh, you know you just got to keep plugging along. It, yeah. It's like anything that you're going to be successful in anything. It's 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 being consistent. It's not giving up. It's I think you got to have some passion for the project, obviously with you and luxury, that's a passion of yours. So it's a simple thing to do. It doesn't feel like a chore. Um, and for me, it's, I'm all about having conversations with people. And I think those conversations lead to uh, some other great things. And I think in real estate, that's a critical piece of the puzzle. We would completely agree. And uh, so thanks for the little background on you, which yeah. brings me uh, to, you know, today. So you're talking with top teams, top agents, independents, franchises. Of course, you've had top luxury agents on as well. You know, what are you seeing? Here we are, August, and many parts of the country, even if it's e-learning, a lot of school, a lot of kids are going back to school. My, my wife's a, a junior high teacher, and uh, she, her first day is today. Our kids start next week. That's why I'm working from the house today. And, uh, you know, what, what are you seeing out there in today's day and age? Uh, you know, what's working, what's not working? Uh, you know, you, you interview, you know, people every week. Uh, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about that, Bill. Well, I think, you know, in this world, um, especially where we're at today, I think, I think early on in the process, it was a, there were a lot of people who were doing that reach out and care, right? Just back in, remember March and April, it was a lot about, yeah. hey, how you doing? Just reaching out to your database, a great excuse to crack open the CRM, have some conversations with people. Um, what I'm seeing now is kind of this morphing and, and actually I'll, I'll attribute this Jorge Guerra, a guy out of Miami, right? Sure, had this Jorge. Great, yeah, yeah, Jorge's great. And he had this at, at the last Inman event in, just earlier this month. He said he sees that changing from the, the caring calls to the we're capable calls, right? That we know how to handle this situation and we know what's happening in the market. We know what's going on. Um, I think of a, a team that I know very well in Orlando, it's Stockworth Realty, right? Uh, Mark Hayes and, and Jason Schmidt, two really smart guys. And they, they 
they have a grasp of the data of what's happening in say the Isleworth, you know, kind of area like I've never seen. And so that's the kind of stuff they're sharing and saying, look, we know what's happening here. We know how to handle that. So those are the kind of things that I'm seeing today. You know, um, you know, Alex Wang is a guy out of California, Silicon Valley. And, you know, he's actually incorporating things like, you know, COVID-19 tips and things into uh, his Yelp site. First of all, Yelp is weird because it only works for me, I think, in California <laughs> or, you know, in big cities. But yeah, he's really taking, you know, the, the, this information about how they're going to handle a transaction to, to different places. I thought that's brilliant. Um, and I think you, some of these people you know, Michael, uh, you know, Melanie Pichet up in Toronto, you know, her website, once again, her website's amazing. And she's got this entire breakdown of what's going to happen on a transaction in today's world. So really delivering knowledge providing that information that, that people need, even in this kind of time that we're in is important. Mm -hmm. So we're capable going from the caring, which is always important, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So continue to do that no matter what line of business you are. We, we stream this to several groups. And, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I have 3,900 connections on Facebook. So a lot of them aren't real estate related. So no matter what business you're in, you know, you, you always want to come from an empathy and, and, and you care standpoint. But also, hey, how are you navigating and explaining that process during this pandemic, right? So uh, we literally had a closing yesterday on a million dollar listing of ours and, and talking about how we navigate, right, through touchless showings, making sure the lights are on, making sure masks, making sure that uh, they have a COVID-19 disclosure filled out ahead of time. This is, this is something, uh, you know, that, that's really important, explaining how you're navigating through this process. Literally just this morning, I was on a $1.8 million listing appointment. Home's currently listed with another agent. The owners called me, they want another opinion. And, 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 and they're asking, how do you, how do you navigate? What, what, what's this new normal look like? Is, did we miss the prime season? I said, well, here we are September through January in Chicagoland is typically the slower market, but mm -hmm. with COVID-19 and sea level executives moving from the city, you know, with what's happening in Kenosha and other areas. Like, I, I think the new norm as far as the traditional uh, selling season, it, throw that out the door and, and you know, you, you might have just as much chance of selling in October, November, December as, as you do any other three months out of the year. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with that more. Like in my role with Fidelity, we had an unbelievable summer <laughs> of, of business. It's been incredibly busy. Inventory is... I'm sure this is a nationwide issue, but there's just no event. When you're talking about a month and a half or three weeks of inventory in certain price points, um, it has been unbelievable how, how busy this industry stayed uh, through this process. So you're right. I think we're looking forward, someone trying to predict what's going to happen. It's a very difficult thing to do right now um, to be able to know exactly what what the fourth third you know the end of the third and the fourth quarter are going to look like. Traditionally, they're slow, right? Traditionally, that's when you know the holidays are here and people are doing other things. But we'll have to see where this goes. And you throw an election on top of that, and there's we've got a lot to to navigate over the next few months. Yeah, and I, I, part of the reason I have you on too, by the way, is I have a lot of connections in the title space. Uh, but kudos to you and Fidelity for being bringing value, right? I mean, you know, there's so many, everybody knows a real estate agent. Uh, real estate agents always get called on by loan officers. I got a loan officer call me last week saying, hey, you know, I'd love to take you to, to lunch and, 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 and share with you what we can do, but I, I'm loyal. I have a relationship already. But my point is, why do the same things as everybody else? Bring additional value and do it in a different way. And, you know, kudos to you, you know, in 2015, some 250 plus podcast later, Bill, uh, of, of bringing content, bringing value to real estate agents that send business to Fidelity and real estate agents that don't, but maybe if they get sick and tired of, of their relationship because maybe they the other company dropped the ball or, or whatever, you know, they think to themselves, what's in it for me? And heck, you know, this Bill guy has brought me a lot of value. Maybe I will take that call from Fidelity. to work michael it's exactly right and it's our sales team is you know the best in the industry and their ability to you know follow up with people that i talk to and just have a conversation look we're all about loyalty being loyal you know, to your vendors and partners in the business makes perfect sense and we have plenty that are very loyal to us 
And when I talk to somebody who's really loyal, my, my question is great. I just, we just want to be number two right behind just in case something happens. You never know. Right. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with that. I, as a branch manager for 10 years, you know, it was, um, it was great to have those people who just, you know, once again, the, I think the best advertising is not me talking about how great I am, but customers talking about how great we were uh, in that office. And I think that's what you're looking for too. And so there's so many core, so many things that are very similar between, I'll call it, you know, lenders, realtors in the title world, that, that Troika, right? <laughs> there's, there's a lot of other pieces, but th those three are the most important. And I think that we all are working the same way. We all want to do a great job, provide a great service and have those people that we've helped reach out to other people and say, you need to know Michael, you need to know Bill. Um, and that's, you know, I think I found the podcast has helped accelerate that. I know you're feeling the same sorts of things, you know? Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I have people say to me, well, oh, you're making a lot of money with the podcast. I go, I don't monetize the podcast. The podcast is there. My benefit from the podcast is delivering information, having conversations with people, sharing people's backstories just to, to, to kind of give people a sense of who they are. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, like there's no, no secret here. You and I are going to have a little conversation when this thing goes off the air because you're going to be my guest next week. And I've got some things I want to talk to you about that you probably haven't talked about on a uh, typical podcast. It'll be fun. Yep. And, uh, but then we're going to talk a lot about what you do. We're going to talk about Lux. We're going to talk about your books and on either, right. And that help yeah. agents be smarter. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's smart. And that's really what the name of the game is, is, is being a little bit different. Don't go do the same things as everybody else. You know, I teach agents to think like a marketer, not like a real estate agent, Bill. And when everybody goes left, go right. When everybody shows up with their iPad, show up differently. And uh, again, I really commend you on that. Uh, you know, talk to me a little bit about, you know, title companies, you know, what, what should an agent look for? Every state's different. So in Illinois, uh, we're an attorney state. So, you know, the, the, the seller's attorney usually determines title where the title is going to be pulled and where the closing is going to occur. Talk to me about, you know, maybe some things that agents or brokers should ask a title company when interviewing them. Yeah. Well, this is a, it's kind of an old school world of title. Um, it's, I always would ask somebody, so did you, you did HUD ones, right? And you've ever, you ever done a HUD one and triplicate on a tire plus in 12 or 13 when the CDs first came out. But I, my take is the experience is really what you're looking for in a title partner. They're the ones who are going to look that contract. They're the ones who are going to pick something out that, that may just that, that schedule B section one item that pops up where the, it, your, your experienced closer can say, uh, Michael, did you see the number six? We got to talk about what's happening on number six, right? Or they're going to be able to notice something that's happening in the contract and kind of bring it to your attention as early as possible. So your, your question is, how much experience do you have? Um, you know, and that's, I think that's number one more than anything else. Uh, the, the, the value that a great closer brings. So it's, it's really important. Yeah. Uh, great, great point. Relationships, being likable, bringing value. Uh, those are all fundamental principles of really any business owner, any entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, I think, I think you're spot on there. Uh, so, What's, what's uh, in the pipeline exciting for you with the real estate sessions or just in general with Fidelity? And what are you seeing trend-wise in the fall of the rest of 2020 real estate? What, you know, what, what are you seeing out there? Well, unfortunately, I'm seeing a whole lot more Zoom sessions. And <laughs> um, I, in Florida, we've, we've definitely improved over the last couple of weeks. So that's a good thing. Uh, we're on the downward slant uh, trend with a number of cases being reported. Um, deaths are starting to fall a little bit as well after having a really rough July, right? Um, 
So for me, I'd like to be able to get back out into the field. I want to get back and see people face to face. Michael, you're a speaker. I mean, to be on stage and for you to have an audience really changes the, the energy. It changes the feel you have. So my hope is that we get to have more of those face to face meetings. We get to a place where, um, you know, we feel safe and we can do that more and more. Um, but, but boy, as far as, you know, what's happening in our world, it really is just, you know, things like remote online notarization, right? We've, we've really run hard with, we call it Ron for short, but the ability to have somebody face-to-face just on a, like a call like this and to actually notarize, you know, legal documents. Um, we've started doing that since we've been doing it since uh, we, we went live with it in January, February, right before the pandemic. And that's been a huge advantage for us is to be able to handle those kinds of processes. So I think what's going to happen long term out of this whole thing is we're not going to see a lot of people going back to exactly the way they were before. I think more people are going to work from home in our industry, even in the title world. We've, we've proven we can do it. We had half our staff working at home through some of the busiest months we've ever had. It's possible. I think you're going to see um, that these sorts of communications we're doing here are just going to become more common. Why would you drive 45 minutes for you to downtown or whatever the number is, right? And, and instead, just jump on a quick Zoom where you couldn't have done that a year ago because they did not have used it. Now we all know how to use it. So I think there's going to be this, I don't know, maybe it's if you, you tried to find a silver lining in, in one of the worst, thing that's, worst things that's ever happened to the country, uh, that might be it, that we realize that we can... Um, get a little bit of our time back, whether it's sitting yeah. traffic or, you know, flying across the country. And, and uh, so hopefully, um, you know, that'll be one of the positives that we'll get. I, I like your optimism and I like the way you look at things. And I would agree. I mean, I, I, uh, I've went on more bike rides and seen more sunsets and, um, you know, things like that with the family uh, because there's more downtime. Uh, talk to me about the notarization. Uh, so yeah. again, a lot of times you have a seller that's out of state and they do, you know, they pre-sign docs uh, through uh, power of attorney, but notarization to talk to me about notarizing. And yeah, remote, remote online notarization is an interesting tool. Imagine getting onto a call like this together and you would then have to go answer a series of questions. And the questions are going to come from a third party kind of vendor. And the questions are things like <clears throat> that only you would know, like from your credit report, like, um, did, did you have a loan, an auto loan with this, you know, which of these three is your auto loan and which of these four are your home? And it's trying to make sure it's you and it's very personal information that we have no access to. It's only between you and this other vendor. I mean, once you can establish that we really are talking to you, then we record the, the actual presentation. We record us going over the information. The whole process then gets stored for a number of years. Um, we witness the signature electronically, which is the remote online notary. The electronic notarial act has been around for since 2002. It's been a long time. But to get lenders to play along with this is the toughest part, right? Because lenders are nervous about having their <laughs> documents signed, a mortgage signed uh, electronically. And there's no fraud involved. So more and more lenders are coming on board with this. They're getting comfortable with the process. Um, this is going to become just part of the regular transaction. You're going to see a lot more of this going forward. Um, and I think that, um, you know, when we talk about the ability to make the transaction easier, it's one of Brad Inman's biggest thing. He wants, he wants this latte experience with the, the escrow transaction. This is one big step, right? To be able to take care of somebody where they're at. There's some rules. Like you have to be a U.S. citizen, um, there's, you know, so for Canadian buyers, we can't do this, you know, currently that's not the way the legislation reads, but, but there's some, it's, it's a great tool. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, that's great. Uh, again, student learns best sometimes, right? So just hearing you explain that in a way, uh, you know, there's some nuggets that I, I just learned, Bill. So thank you. <laughs> what, what's, what's the best way for someone to stay in touch with you and, 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 and uh, get in, if, if they have any questions or get in touch with you, Bill? Sure. Yeah, look, I'm, if Bill Risser at Gmail is a simple way. It's just outside of work. It's easy. Bill Risser at Gmail. Um, I'm also, if you just Google my name, um, there's not a whole lot of Bill Rissers. And so you'll find all my social sites. And, uh, you know, if, if someone had to pin me down, I had a favorite site. It's probably Twitter. I like uh, I communicate with a number of people through Twitter, whether DMs or that sort of thing. 
Uh, but yeah, reach out that way, or you can always, you know, go to the real estate sessions.com. Um, lots of cool episodes on there. I think I told you some of the, the people I've interviewed, you know, I, Dolly lens was episode 200, which was super fun. Right. Uh, she's an amazing lady. And I think, you know, Louise, uh, Phillips yeah. Forbes in, in Manhattan. She's another wonderful, uh, interview. She's in there. Raj Kassar, uh, yeah, another great, great guy that's doing some cool stuff in orange County. Yeah, yeah, Raj is awesome. Uh, I mentioned Jason Schmidt with Stockworth Realty. Um, trying to think, I'm trying to think of someone else you might know. Richard Silver up in Toronto. He's doing some oh, yeah, stuff Richard, at Toronto yeah. Yeah. yeah, Richard, yeah. Uh, he does a great job up in Toronto. And he's with Sotheby's. And uh, yep. I've had him on our show because one of the things that Richard does, because uh, Toronto's a lot like Chicago in a lot, a lot of major cities, right? It's a melting mm -hmm. bed. You've got a lot of diversity, different languages. So Richard built his team based on, the look and feel of his community and then the community as well as the language. And it was just, you know, he's, yeah. he's a great guy. Yeah. Good guy. He's a, he's my, he's my Broadway partner in the Inman, New York. We go to shows every year that we're there together. So a shout out to Richard for, uh, yeah. <laughs> for, for, for taking, you know, keep me, keep me engaged in Broadway. It's awesome. So. Yeah. A couple of years ago at Inman, uh, there was a broker preview event at a $73 million penthouse unit. And, uh, and I went with Richard. It was, it was a lot of fun. So. Nice. Very yeah. good. Well, good. Well, hey, thank you for um, all your nuggets. Uh, again, the Real Estate Sessions podcast, check it out. Uh, the website is is what? TheRealEstateSessions.com? Correct. That's it. Right. Bill, Bill Risser, R-I-S-S-E-R. -S -S -E check him out. Great guy. Well-connected. Fidelity. Uh, again, like he said, if you have a relationship with another title company, uh, They'd love to be number two if, if you have a hiccup or you have a deal that can't get done. While I got you, uh, what are you seeing with crypto? Are you guys doing anything, any closings with, with crypto yet? No, not, not, not really. Uh, it's just being converted. If someone that wants to use it converts it prior to close. So, okay. um, but, you know, the, obviously that's, that's going to be coming soon. To for a lot of different people, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but I know we have uh, we have a uh, a team of people that are in the fidelity world who are you know playing in that space, working in that space, making sure that when we get to the place where we can be a part of that, we'll be a part of that. Good. Yeah, I have uh, a buyer that's interested in several properties we represent, as well as others, and uh, he's in the crypto world. And uh, it's an interesting conversation that you have to have with the the listing agent and and the seller. Uh, because it is, it's different. It's unique. And uh, so uh, we'll see. I haven't done a crypto closing yet, but hopefully we'll be doing some here uh, still this year. I'll be watching for you to talk about it after it happens. I'm, I can't wait to hear how it goes. So. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Well, good. Well, hey, make it a great day. Keep raising the bar. Love what you're doing, Bill. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Right, you're welcome. And again, tune in next week. we got another exciting guest. Again, Luxury Lunch and Learn. We went from three of these a week down to one a week uh, just because it's the, the summer and travel and school starting up. But feedback's been amazing. If you guys like what you're hearing, leave us a comment. Uh, again, you could go to our YouTube channel, Marketing Luxury Group, and uh, click on the playlist, which you'll see Luxury Lunch and Learn to get replays of previous shows, previous episodes. Uh, Luxury Lunch and Learn. It's on our YouTube channel, Marketing Luxury Group. My name is Michael Lofito. Keep raising the bar in real estate. And we need more love, more kindness. There's just so much negativity and toxicity out there. Love your neighbor and uh, be positive and make somebody's day. Take care, Bill. Bye-bye. Thanks, Michael. Bye. You're welcome.